program. Let's welcome in Rohit Srivastava now uh, as well. Uh, he's joining us. He's of course uh, founder of IndiaCharts.com. Uh, Rohit, good, uh, good afternoon. Good to have you with us here. Uh, you know, the market, of course, is the big story. Uh, starting at about 1:30, big fall, and you know, it looked like it would be one of those like a flash crash, right? Uh, the, the big dip, short-lived, but then prices reset, ba reset back to where they were before. Uh, and it looked like it was panning out that way, and then there was a second dip. So just talk to us about what you've observed. Uh, and uh, second, what to your mind is the big dominating driver, you know, the big price signal for our markets uh, from here out? Is it, the, is, is it the US market? Is it something else? Go on. So, uh, uh, so the main driver here is, of course, global markets, which is being pulled down by uh, US bond yields, right? That is, uh, that is the main, main uh, problem uh, over here, that the markets are beginning to recognize uh, that we can't have interest rates at these low levels. Uh, some of it may be related to, I think, not so much inflation, but the high growth rate, but also that the US has a large borrowing program. Almost, I think, seven trillion dollars of have, uh, you know of uh, refinancing has to happen for the government debt. So that's keeping pressure on bond deals, and that that pressure on bond deals, which uh, I think markets or even the Fed was not anticipating or or was trying to talk down, is now uh, you know getting markets to realize that they can't really keep running uh, one way up. So I think that's what is driving the correction. Uh, and as long as we have a bond bear market, uh, the fall in equities may not be over even though right now as of this moment i think the current four five day fall is getting to a very short term oversold reading i thought it would hold twenty two thousand, but even if it's below that it's, it just gets a little more oversold so i will not rule out a one to two day very sharp rebound of this fall but eventually i think we are headed lower so that is the setup uh, we are looking at uh, on an immediate basis uh, so when you say that um, not the immediate term, with notwithstanding that, uh, markets are in a corrective phase. Will it last for how long? Where do we, you know, will it last for a few months? Uh, and how low can we go? So uh, I think in a couple of weeks, we look at initially somewhere close to 21,200 or so. That is going to be the first major support where uh, we will try to judge whether this is just a routine correction, you know, you lose 1,000 points and bottom out, or is this going to be something bigger? I think that is going to be the determining level. Uh, because if that breaks, then then it will be the first time we'll be breaking it, uh, you know, breaking the uh, weekly supports since uh, this rally started more than a year back. You know, so that has not happened. Uh, if you're looking for that final confirmation of a major reversal, you'll probably wait for that to break. But if I look at the structure of the market, it does give us early warning signs that this could be something bigger. So in that sense, I would be prepared for things to get, uh, you know, uh, uh, much worse than what we've been thinking. Uh, but even then, uh, the final uh, breakdown level will be 21, uh, 200, 21, 100. Uh, where we'll watch out for. So there's room for it to at least fall till there. So let's start with that much uh, and take it from there. Street will hope it doesn't go all the way there, uh, you know, uh, for the bull's benefit ahead of elections. Uh, but, you know, the market's trying to inch back to that 22,000 mark, Rohit, with the Nifty Bank holding above that 47,000 mark. Let's see where it closes as, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the closing settles with uh, the volume-weighted average price. Any individual names that stand out in terms of either an up move or a down move opportunity? I think there'll be a lot of down move opportunities. Uh, what has been happening so far is so much rotation that I've actually been uh, avoiding thinking too much about stocks because there are some, if you look at, if you look at tech, like yesterday I just opened up LTIM and it's just consistently falling, falling, falling. So that is the tech sector. And somewhere if it's falling one way, then the tech sector gets oversold and you know you start wondering whether uh, that will actually give you a counter trend move against the market. Uh, on the other hand, you have banking, which has been a non-participant throughout the year, and can it actually further uh, provide us that room for you know those opportunities on the short side as far as financials are concerned in general, not just banking, but I think uh, financial financial stocks overall, uh, because the, that is where even even the interest rates hit the interest rate sensitive sectors. So I would think of shorting financials, autos, uh, whatever gets hurt by higher rates uh, would be the areas of risk. Mm. <clears throat> uh, Rohit, uh, 
you know the uh, if if we kind of uh, let's just look at the other side right is it is it uh, okay it's 21 uh, 100 21 200 what you said right that's about 3 3 1/2% away from where we are right now yeah i mean so it would fall in that quote unquote routine uh, correction category uh, and we've had those uh, before as well uh, but uh, you know on the other side Uh, and and for this to happen do you think us equities also need to pull back or 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 not really it looks like uh, i mean the uh, us equities also for the first time in about 15 months or so are starting to uh starting to pull back do you think that that needs to accelerate uh, for your view here to play out it looks like uh, because if we say the primary driver is uh, the us bond yields uh, rising it will have an impact on uh, us markets and and that is what is trickling down to our market uh the geopolitical and other angles i think are the side show which usually is news that follows the the trend that has already reversed uh but i think that uh, i think the macro factors are more critical over here than than just the geopolitics that uh, that we are seeing so uh i think you us equities which are at the center of that entire action because that's where the debt and borrowing is taking place and, and and you know we've seen a couple of things from central banks uh, which are which were red flags one of them uh is our own uh i don't know how much importance has been given but the rbi is saying that you know you can't trade in currency derivatives anymore is sort of a panic uh, a panic situation that you you reach you know why would you suddenly curtail something that you started in 2008 uh unless you're perceiving that there's over speculation happening which if i go by the open interest there is no really sign of that happening because open interest in in usd and our futures has not really exploded to the upside where you should actually start panicking in fact it is the futures open interest in uh, stock and index futures that uh, is at 18 times the index which is similar to what it was in 2018 and 2008 both of which were major tops for mid caps and small caps so that is a bigger concern to me than currency so if the if the rbi is panicking on the currency side it tells you something that they are worried about uh, on the global front and you've uh, similarly seen the fed suddenly back off from the idea that they were to cut rates to saying that we need to stay higher for longer you know so it's sort of an acceptance that you know this is a very different environment uh, i think central banks try to use language to tone things the other way but it didn't work uh, you know their whole attempt to talk down interest rates uh, sort of failed is is what has happened Okay. Although uh, Rohit and we'll talk more about this, uh, <coughs> they can go they can go the other way very fast as well, right? I mean, the last time the ten-year was at five percent was late last year, hmm. and that's the first time that you know uh, the, the 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 Fed we started to hear them adjust their policy stance towards being more dovish, and that eased in financial condition eased financial conditions quite a bit, and now we are here, so it's. Uh, you know one can but we'll talk more about this we have to take a break i'm told so let's do that market's trying to come back 22040 so about 40 points above the 22000 level with a 110 point cut stay with us rohit is with us as well a few minutes to go to close Okay, welcome back. Uh, there's about two and a half minutes to go to close, and uh, we're counting down a uh, hundred points lower. As I said, there's a bit of a recovery which actually set in. Rohit is still with us. Rohit, to that point we were talking uh, talking about earlier about uh, you know uh, you know one thing is sure everyone ma- wants markets to be higher, especially in an election year. It doesn't matter uh, Republicans or Democrats in the U.S. Uh, so if conditions were to become uh, sort of a little Uh, under pressure and the definition of what is under pressure has become uh, very very lenient now right 3 4 5% percent and the market starts to think about when intervention will come next so do you think uh, we'll get to that stage very fast or this is different uh so uh, so all, all the all the comparisons are being done with what happened in the 60s and 70s which is the last inflationary cycle and the question ahead of the fed is essentially uh, should they move too soon or uh, you know should they wait because if they move too soon uh, you'll end up pushing uh, you know reflation all the way back you know so you'll end up with you know this 3% inflation going back to 5 6 7% oil prices going back to 100 dollars plus and so on 
uh, and that is the risk that if you move too soon. So, so that's I think the uh, uh, the the whole issue that is timing. Uh, you'd really wait. Ideally, you'll wait for a crisis. You're right. Uh, and moment it looks critical, the chances are they step in and start buying bonds, and you know that sort of reverses the situation. And if they do it pretty quickly, then 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 will you really get a very deep cut in the markets? And that is, I think, that is, I think, uh, something that we'll have to. Uh, keep on our uh, in our mind that at any point of time, if there's a policy change, then we have to back off from what we are thinking. But can they really move that quickly on policy? Uh, uh, I'm really wondering because you're still you're still not gotten full control. And uh, on the other hand, this is slightly different from 2018, where they you know turn quickly because you have government spending as the big handle. Uh, a lot of the impetus, a lot of the demand uh, that you're seeing in the US economy is coming because of government spending. And, and that, uh, how do you really get hold of that? So if you really move quickly in terms of cutting rates or doing QE and government spending, and that money is still circulating, you very, very quickly ignite inflation. And I think uh, that is why they may not be able to move as fast as we would like to think or as they have done in the past. They might actually have to wait for things to slow down in terms of economic activity before they can, you know, uh, move quickly to cut rates or go back to QE. And so I think that's the time. Yeah. Uh, no, got that. Uh, Rohit, uh, you know, it's a pleasure speaking with you. Great explanation. Appreciate you joining in here uh, for that. The market, by the way, is that we end down 100 points. Thank you for watching CNBC TV 18. For all our top stories and news updates, follow us on our social media platforms.